Now let's take a look about a summary about the advantages and disadvantages of data. So on the advantages side, we've already talked about the flexibility that the uh, data vault model brings uh, onto the table and how this is achieved uh, by modeling as closely as possible the business and, um, and by having this uh, very clear separation of responsibilities between the different uh, business concepts. Um, the data vault model also brings transparency and auditability to your pipeline. So you, thanks to the metadata that's that keeps uh, well, that we store in each of the entities, we are able to answer the question of which source system delivered what and also what happened when. So we we keep track of uh, the, the source of the information and also the different versions of uh, this information. So we could potentially go back in time and see the data as it was on a previous or an older uh, date. Um, data Vault is designed from the from the beginning as a scalable solution, so it's all, scalability has also always been in mind from the ingestion process, scaling up to petabyte scale um, um, data scale, and uh, also on the management side to be able to 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 have teams collaborating and working together. Um, you can, uh, when you onboard new source systems, it's uh, very easy for each source, source system to um, model their own data, add them to the data warehouse and integrate it with the existing work from other teams. So it's uh, very easy, very fast to get everyone and all of the uh, source systems onboarded into this data warehouse. Um, Data Vault also, and this we haven't really covered up to you yet, uh, has a standardization also in mind. So by having three basic components, uh, um, it's easy to automate the generation of, um, of these components and um, th this will help you and your teams uh, just deliver faster by uh, automating boilerplate, boilerplate code and uh, um, boilerplate logic uh, through this uh, standardized approach. You know, each entity has a common structure, so it's easy really to, to model after it and to uh, um, have templates that you can reuse around. But uh, all of these advantages come at a cost and uh, Data Vault also has some disadvantages with, uh, with it. Um, to be able to work with the Data Vault architecture, you need experienced data engineers with uh, at, at least high level engineering skills and that also know and understand the data vault. Um, the, by having so many entities, you know, by uh, tackling the complexity of problems by creating new entities into the, into the model, uh, it has a very big, large storage requirements. And also if you want to keep full auditability and, and keep track of the full history of the data, this can even be bigger because you will effectively keep track of every single version that the system has uh, has seen. There's ways to, to um, lower these or there's ways to, to mitigate this problem, but um, um, in general, it's a data model and data architecture that um, has duplicated information and a very high number of entities in the model. This also brings a bit of um, a cognitive overhead because it's uh, sometimes it can be difficult to keep track of all so many entities in a in a, in a model, in a data model. Um, also, uh, we've talked about talked about links being modeled after a many-to-many -many relationship. This means that more joints operations need to to happen, even for simple relationships like a one-to-one, -one where only one join would be needed. Every single link from one business concept to another one will need at least two joints to to be able to be performed. Again, there's uh, ways to mitigate this by the introduction of more advanced. Um, entities of the data vault models, such as, such as the bridge tables. But um, overall, it's a model and an architecture that uh, requires many more joint operations than a, a denormalized one. 
Finally, uh, we already know that uh, Datable uses the three-layer architecture, and on this three-layer architecture, we have sub-layers. Uh, this is very good for flexibility and to adapt to changes, as we have many layers to absorb the, the business changes. But the problem that comes with this is that um, it takes more time from data from the source system to get to a data mark. Again, there's ways to mitigate this, and if you want, really need a fast lane to get data from, uh, let's say, a near real-time or real-time use case and, for, and ingest data uh, or streaming data and really get it out as soon as possible, there's ways that uh, you can use the data model to mitigate and limit the, the, the amount of time that it could take. But um, in general, having so many layers means that the data gets... Uh, it takes longer for data to get to the information mark.